Welcome to the Coupa Travel Dashboard Review, where I will cover how to access your travel profile and how to go in as a traveler to book air, car, and hotel bookings, along with how to cancel those bookings if need be. And then finally, talking about support that's offered. I'm currently on the homepage of Coupa Travel, where I've clicked on Travel and Expense to see an overview of my trips that may be upcoming and also any draft expense reports. So you can see on the left-hand side is my trip shell to New York. And then on the right-hand side would be any draft expense reports if I had any. From here, I can create a new trip or I can also create an expense report or I can jump into expenses or travel from these buttons here. We'll start with going into my travel profile to talk about what's needed to be updated there and then go from there. Coupa Travel is connected to the core Coupa, so your user record within core does bring over your name and email address, um, but the other items that are needed in here specific to travel do need to be updated by the traveler. We also recommend that you double check that your name is your legal name that matches your form of ID because that's important when you're traveling. TSA won't let you through unless those two items match. You can see here I've updated my gender and my birth date, so they're actually grayed out. Uh, when you log in for the first time, you'll enter in that information. Uh, you can also enter in your phone number and then any travel specific information like passport, or known traveler number if you want TSA PreCheck to show on your flight ticket. Once everything's added, you can save your traveler profile and that will allow you to move forward and book. Before you do that though, you can also add information around loyalty numbers. You can see I've got my Hilton number in here. If I wanted to add another, I can go in and add loyalty number and then type in the program. Maybe it's a United or a Delta uh, program. You can do that here and then hit save. I can also manage my travel arrangers from here. So a travel arranger is someone that can book on my behalf. So if I have an executive admin that tends to do my travel for me, I can go ahead and add that person in here and then they're gaining access to my traveler profile details and the ability to book for me so that I don't have to. So how I do that is uh, I go in and add someone and then basically I just start typing the name of the person that I want and they will show up from the drop down list below as long as they've been given the role type called Traveler Ranger. So if you don't see the name of the person that you're looking for, reach out to your Coupa admin and make sure that they have the correct role. From here, I can grant access and now Janice is able to book on my behalf. Finally, we have the payment methods here. So if you have a corporate card or a personal card that you wanna use for booking travel, you can add that information in here as well. You can see I've got my corporate card. The card type is corporate. That is a Visa card. If I wanted to add a personal card, I can do that here by adding payment, type in the card number and information, and then save it as a personal card. Again, this will give you the ability to use these when you're walking through the booking flow. Once I'm done with everything, I will save my traveler profile, make sure everything's updated, and now I can go ahead and move forward with travel. From here, I'm gonna go into the trip section, and this is going to bring me to any of my upcoming trips that I've started to create. I would also be able to see any past trips if I had taken any, or any archive trips. So if maybe, for example, I'm not gonna go to Chicago anymore, I can click on this, click on settings and archive the trip. I can also change the name as well if I want to make it more specific, like client meeting or whatever. If I click on archive trip, when I go back to my trips, you'll notice it's not here anymore, but if I click on show archive trips, it now shows down here. This is a great way to just keep your, your current trip shells available and you can always unarchive if need be. From here, I can either click into my upcoming trip and add to it if I maybe had a flight already but needed to book a hotel, or I can start a new trip. And the way that I do that is click here on start a trip. This will bring me into the start a trip process or what we call the trip shell. You'll notice it defaults to me as who are you booking for. 
Um, if I were a travel arranger, I could type in different names here. We'll get to that, uh, the travel arranger component in a future session. My company requires that I give a purpose. So you'll see there's a red asterisk here. I can't move forward until I add that trip purpose. You'll see it's required. So when I click here, you'll notice there's a drop down. So I can choose, uh, maybe this is a client travel. I'll choose that one and then I'll hit next. From here, I'll do my destination, um, my origin and destination. I can also choose round trip, one way or multi-city. So I live in Minnesota, so we'll do Minneapolis to, let's say I'm gonna go to Miami for this one. And then for the dates, let's say I've got a meeting in mid-September, maybe the 18th to the 20th. And then this creates that trip shell that I mentioned. <clears throat> From here, I can click on book a hotel, book a flight, book a car. I can also click on them from here. So there's multiple ways to get into the search results. And you'll notice right now it's spinning, spinning, saying finding flights. What Coupa does is it takes into consideration the travel policy of your company along with certain preferences that you put into the system to build out this best score. These Basically these numbers that are over here in the green boxes. The idea here is on this page, we wanna make it simple with less clicks to walk through the booking process for a flight. So if one of these flight options looks good, I can just click on it and move forward. If I wanna see more options, I would click on view available flights or book a flight, and that will bring me into a full search for this, this flight. <clears throat> You'll notice here, I can switch this back to one way. I can change to a different cabin class. Um, again, keep in mind, what your, your corporate policy says around different cabin classes. Uh, there may be warnings tied to those if you try to book them in the system. Um, we also have by default regular fares. So you'll see that all of these say non-refundable. Typical flights are typically non-refundable. Um, basically, if you were to cancel, you'll get a credit that you can use towards a future flight. Some companies do allow to book refundable fares, uh, but keep in mind that regular fares are, are more common. Uh, just because they're they're more economic, economical. So you'll want to, again, check your travel policy on, on what's available. From here, you'll see it's got my origin and then my destination for cities like uh, Miami, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, where there's multiple airline or sorry, airports. Uh, we do bring in options because you could be flying in and out of, of one or the other. Um, you can also fly into one, fly out of the other, et cetera. Uh, but if maybe I only want to look at Miami, all I have to do is get rid of the Fort Lauderdale. And now I can hit search flights again, and it's going to bring up just the Miami searches. So keep in mind when you do that flight search to check what the, the airports are, especially for some of those larger cities where there may be multiple um, airports. From here, it'll bring up the search options. And you'll see here the configure your priorities. This is where that number comes from for the sort by best. So if I go in to configure my priorities, you can see I've added information around the times I like to fly or don't like to fly, the airlines that I, I like and dislike, um, and then I can also set ranking scores um, about those different preferences. And this helps guide these best scores that we see in that search result, again, the idea being the better, the bigger the score, the more likely you are to choose that flight. Um, but we do have the ability to change the flight search to by price or duration, um, arrival time, departure time, etc. Once the search result comes up again, we'll go ahead and move forward and choose our flights here. Uh, so you'll see, um, I, I like to fly earlier in the morning, so we're going to choose this 8:55 flight. We'll do the 6 p.m. flight back. It's pulling in my information. I can look over it and then continue booking. From here, it's going to bring me to a checkout page. So if I want to select seats, I can do that from here. It's pulling in my information. It's pulling in my form of payment. Again, if I wanted to change my form of payment, I can do that from here. If I had a Delta loyalty number, that would pull in as well. And then I can go ahead and complete my booking. Once I've completed my booking, it's going to attach that booking to the itinerary. 
and I will be able to then go on and book my hotel or car, um, whatever is needed. I can also cancel that flight um, or make modifications to it. So you'll see here the confirmation is pending. Basically, I'm just waiting for the back end to do the ticketing of it. Once that happens, this will move to confirmed and you'll get an email itinerary receipt. You'll also then see an expense report created with that flight expense line added and that itinerary attached as the receipt. Um, so that will all update automatically once it goes through that ticketing process. Like I mentioned, I can cancel this or modify it. The way that I do that is through this little settings wheel here. So if I wanted to cancel this, maybe I, I changed my mind. I'm not going to go to Miami. I can click on cancel flight. If this had already been confirmed and gone through the ticketing process, I could also modify. So if I wanted to change maybe my outbound flight, I could go in and modify that. Right now, it's since it's still pending, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel. And then this way I can, um, you know, maybe I, I didn't mean to go on this, this trip, wasn't needed. I can go ahead and just click cancel. If it's after the period where basically we have what we call a void window for the first 24 hours from when you book, you can typically cancel that without any penalty. Beyond that is when that non-refundability comes into play. So if this were, you know, two days from now and I went to cancel, there may be a note here saying um, there will be a charge and you would have that credit for a future use. But for now, um, because it's still pending, it's still at zero. So I can go ahead and cancel this flight and then it will take it out of my itinerary. I'll get a pop-up that says canceled successfully, sounds good. So you always wanna make sure you get that pop-up to confirm that it's canceled. So any cancellations or modifications for flights can be done within the system. And now you'll see it's back to that search for flights. Same process for hotel. If I click on book a hotel here, it's going to bring up my default of Miami and my dates here um, that I put into that original trip shell. And then I can go ahead and search for my hotels. The search results will show the properties listed on the left-hand side and then a map on the right-hand side. If you just put in um, like Miami or Chicago, it will create what they consider a city center and base the search off of that. If you want it to be more specific to a certain area, maybe you want Miami Beach or Brickell, um, whatever it may be, or an office location, you can add that in here and then it will make this search result more specific to that radius. So you'll see here's kind of where this one is. Um, close to the, the airport, so I've got all my options here. I can click on these numbers and it will bring me to that property. So here's the Intercontinental, or I can just scroll through these properties as well. You'll see some say negotiated rates. So we do offer negotiated rates from Coupa. So discounted rates will be listed. Um, and then any other rates should be um, mentioned as well. So if I go into, let's say the Hyatt here, I can click the different room types. Here you can see we've got a lot of member rates. So if I have a Hyatt uh, member, I can book this and get that, that um, price. But if I don't, I would wanna stay away from those. Maybe I wanna stick to one of these negotiated rates here. <clears throat> Again, you wanna look at the details. It will tell you whether it's refundable or non-refundable. Um, if there's an out of policy guideline that will be tied here as well. And you'll be able to see whether or not something is within your corporate policy. So we'll go ahead and click on this flight or this, sorry, this booking here, this rate, and it's going to basically bring you back to that same um, confirmation page, similar to the flights. It's pulling in my form of payment. If I had a Hyatt number, it would pull in here. And then again, I can complete that booking and move forward. You want to always check again, especially cancellation policy the information, make sure you're happy with everything. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and book, but if you were to do so, you would go ahead and just add it to your itinerary, and then you would have that hotel booking ready for you. You can also cancel hotel bookings within the tool, same way that you do flights. You just click on the little settings and hit cancel. Um, if it's a um, refundable hotel, you'll just, it'll tell you, you know, you're good to go. If there is a fee, it will also call that out. So you want to make sure that you check on that as well. 
If I go back to my trips, um, you can see now that Miami trip shell is showing here. Um, maybe I want to add a, a car to my, my New York trip. So I would click on the New York trip shell um, and then click on book a car rental here. Um, maybe I, right now it says New York, but maybe I'm flying into Newark. So I can type in uh, Newark here and then start my, my search. You'll notice that the pickup time is 12. I can go in and change that, that information if it makes sense. Um, if you wanna make it more specific to your, your flights, you can do so. Um, you can see right now we've got our, our preferred rates here for your company. It will state that clearly if you've got preferred rates. Um, and then you can go ahead and see what kind of car it is, where you're picking it up. Any car rental that's airport specific will have the little airplane. So you definitely wanna make sure if you're trying to pick up at an airport that it has that, and then you can go ahead and, and select um, your car rental. <clears throat> Again, here, if I have my loyalty, I can add it, and then I can go ahead and complete my booking. One thing to call out with car rental is we are not able to cancel our cars within the tool. We do have to reach out to an agent for support for any car rental cancellations. And the way that you would do that is you would either call them. There's a, a number, and I'll show you where that's listed here in a minute once that, that car rental goes through. Um, or you can chat with an agent. So two options. You can chat within the platform, or you can call uh, the number that's listed, and then there'll be a company code that you're given as part of um, your onboarding that is specific to your company. So I'll go ahead and show you what that chat looks like. You'll see down here this little blue circle with the, the white box here. This will be on any page within travel. You can click on this, and this is where you would start that chat. Um, I can also find different articles to help me. Um, so like here, how do I change or cancel a car? I can click on that, and it will tell me step by step how to do that. So I would just travel, I would contact my travel leader's um, agent. Again, the way I would do that is I can send a message through here and they're available for chat between eight and eight Eastern, or I can call the number that's listed here. So either way, that's how we would deal with our um, car rental cancellation or modification. And really any question for travelers, we suggest they go through the chat function here. Um, you can also reach out via phone. Our agents are fantastic. They're well-versed in the tool. If you're having an issue with a booking, um, need to make changes on the go, that kind of thing, you can do that all from within this tool.